Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris over Dixieland Farm, and today I'm going to talk to you about why I use Linux. And it's not because I want to be uh, uh, geeky, but I am, uh, or clever or anything like that. But there, there's some real reasons why I use Linux. If you don't know what Linux is, it's an operating system, just like Windows, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows XP. That's an operating system, or Mac OS, that's an operating system. Linux is an operating system, but it's also... It's, it gets a little muddled, and that, you'll find that a lot in the Linux world. It's also, it's just the thing that talks to hardware. So there's actually Linux and lots of stuff. If you have an Android phone, it runs Linux. If you um, have a uh, Wi-Fi controlled thermostat, most likely inside there is Linux. Uh, the servers that run the internet run Linux. So it's, it's an operating system, but it's a little more than that also. And the reason why it's in so many things is that it's open source. And what that means is you can actually look at the code completely, read it, modify it, uh, because it's released under the GPL, the General Public License, or is it Purpose License? I think it's Public License. Modify it to your heart's content and put it out there. Uh, part of open source in this case also means, besides you being able to... Uh, modify it is that you're able to distribute it freely. I can make my changes and then give it away. And it's kind of collaborative. Uh, some uh, nerds will get extremely upset at the term open source. There's a lot of that also <laughs> because uh, what the original concept for the GNU project was free and open source. Free as in freedom. Freedom to do whatever you want with the, the code. And also to a somewhat extent free to use for everybody doesn't necessarily mean free as in it doesn't cost anything though it does mean that as well uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that so Linux is for the most part free to all free to use free to modify and free in cost that is one reason why I use it but it's also, uh, because it is collaborative, because there are so many people looking at the code, uh, the interests are in the community, the people that use it, opposed to business interests. So Windows is there to make a profit. They just need enough of an operating system for you to buy it. They don't have to do anything more than that. They're not obligated to because it's private interests. Same thing with Macintosh. Uh, Linux. If somebody feels there's a need for something, they make it and they contribute it and to the greater good. And then we all benefit from that. That is one of the reasons why open source rocks. Also, security flaws are not hidden. When things happen to Microsoft or Macintosh, they probably happened years ago. You just find out about them when there's a need for you to know about it because it's been discovered. However, in the open source Linux world, it's all out there dangling, and because of that, it's patched much more rigorously and kept up to date, so it is more secure. Also, because there's so many eyes on it, it's more stable. At my workplace, uh, where I work in computers, my day job, the standard advice is to reboot the machine nightly. You must, otherwise the machine starts bogging down, slowing down, there are things that have run for years, literally years, without ever being powered off it using Linux. And my system is complicated here in the house. It doesn't need to be, but it is. And it runs regularly two, three, four months before I ever reboot. There's no need to because it's so stable. It's also security conscious, not just due to the bugs and patching, but the way the system is designed. There are uh, levels of users and if you want to do certain things you need to put in a password and if you need to install something you have to put in a password because of that it's also file permissions are much more uh, nuanced so you can block yourself out of accidentally deleting important things uh, easily which is a good thing also if somebody steals your credentials they may not be able to change your system, depending on how you have your Linux system set up. Another reason, 
my personal story. So uh, many years ago, probably around 2006, I got a virus on my Windows PC. I was probably running XP at the time. Maybe it was Windows 98. I don't remember. It's been a long time. And I got a virus so bad. It was also kind of uh, ransomware, which was uh, new at the time. That really wasn't a thing, but it was uh, unfortunately a growing thing now where hackers would kind of just throw a net out there, screw up your system, and then you have to give them money to get your system back. So I rebooted and reformatted and reinstalled Windows. And within 30 minutes, without doing anything in particular, I got a virus again, a different virus. So I said, all right, let's go ahead and try Linux that I've heard all about. And since then, I have not turned back. You'll see in an upcoming video where I upgrade my system, it, I, I have uh, trepidation, nervousness. It's uh, uh, about my computing setup, but that is because one of the other benefits of Linux is its adaptability to what you need it to do. If I just wanted to install what normal people use, I could do that in less than an hour, a couple of clicks, have a fully operating system with a, window, uh, with a web browser, with a full office suite, like so I can do word processing and calculations and things like that, plus a myriad of other things. One of the uh, other benefits of Linux are, are that ideas are tried out a lot easier. So um, there'll be different ways of doing the same thing uh, because somebody built one tool and somebody built a different tool. And so you'll have different tools to kind of choose from, which is good. Choice. Great thing. One of the things that they tried out years ago was a uh, idea of a software repository which is now used on your cell phone. You go to Google Play or you go to the App Store uh, on your iPhone. This was done in Linux years ago. When you want to install a piece of software there is a central repository where that software is stored and you just go to several different programs where you can do this. You would click what kind of program you're looking for. They might have a description, a screenshot, or whatever. You click a button and it installs. And that's it. You don't go to a website to find it. And also, by doing that, you're also safe in the knowledge that the software has been vetted to a degree. There is no malware installed in a software because most likely it is open source as well. Somebody's looked at the code before they installed and compiled and made it available out there to the public. Updates are a simple click. You hit update, it updates the system. Back in the older days of uh, Windows, uh, this was not the case. It is now. However, you also have more control of when those updates happen. You can choose to never update. You can choose to only update overnight. You can, only, you can choose just security updates. You can, you can get very granular with these kind of updates. You can see exactly what's been updated and just choose one thing very easily. Uh, you don't have that choice in Windows. Uh, what they say goes now. That's another uh, good thing about this software repository. As features are added, as security bugs are figured out, that software repository is updated and you don't have to do anything. It just updates and it's taken care of and it's not a problem. And again, it's your choice whether you want to go along with that or you want to leave the system as is. Very often on my computer I don't upgrade the software nearly as much because I'm I want a stable system with no changes. I don't want any surprises. So I kind of do it myself uh, every few months opposed to nightly. My choice and that's the way I run my system. Uh, besides the password protection and the different user levels and the software repository and the open sourceness, it is very customizable and configurable to what you needed to do. So uh, while you'll see lots of examples of people running what it's called the uh, terminal, the, the command prompt, like the old DOS days, all text, and that seems like, wow, that's really geeky. There's a lot of power in doing that and you can get very specific. So, for example, I wrote a quick one-line program. Really, it's just a command line. It's complicated, but I wrote it so that way all I have to do is if I want to convert a video file of any type to a 16 by 9 format, DVD compatible, uh, 
so I can burn it to a DVD. All I would do is I would literally type 16.9, name of the input file, and what I want the output file to do, and it's done. That's something I needed to do on a regular basis. I was probably converting stuff to put on my, uh, my home television network that I've got here in the house. I'll explain that in a second, too. And boom, done. Or uh, the iPad, the way I like the camera is to face over here, opposed to over here. And what that does is the video file is flipped upside down. So I wrote a one-line program that automatically takes the file, flips it the right way, and compresses it so I can upload it to YouTube. And it took me 20 seconds to type out that file, and now, boom, it's done. Uh, when I convert files for DTS quad sound, I did the same thing. I wanted to uh, make it, so I could make all that happen on the command line instantly with just one command that I know, and I could feed those commands into other commands, so you can get really complicated with this stuff, which is one of the reasons why in the video that I shot, that I'll be posting in the future, you can see I'm very nervous. Because of all those customizations, I didn't want to lose anything, and so I got nervous about it. <laughs> However, it all worked out just fine, and it always does. What else can I tell you about Linux? It's the, oh, all the different things you can do. So uh, I say this in the upcoming video too. So I have an in-house movie channel for our Roku's. So there's a web server that's running and I dump files into different folders and those folders are automatically presented to the Roku's. So if we want to watch Simpsons reruns uh, the, that I've got from my DVDs, there's a channel and it's called Simpsons. If there are videos from uh, Walt Disney World, that we want to watch. There's a Walt Disney World channel that has just Disney World stuff and including there's a channel uh, on there of all our vacation videos and there are some classic movies. I've got them as well or things to watch or there's also shows I recorded off the air are automatically uh, transcoded the shows that I want and linked and served up to the Roku. So I can watch any of those shows that were recorded usually within a couple of hours. That's one of the things I, did, I can do. Print server, so uh, uh, the printer is shared. That's not really that interesting. All computers can do that now. But in the earlier days, it wasn't that easy. Same thing with file sharing. It wasn't that easy, but in Linux, it's always been easy. Two commands and it's done. Other things that uh, Linux does that's pretty good is taking care of devices. Very old to relatively new. There are no drivers usually that you have to deal with. The kernel recognizes everything and just takes care of it and auto configures everything. So if you get a new piece of equipment, there's no putting in a disk, inst installation disk, making it work. It already recognizes it and it just, it's already there. There are exceptions to that, but those exceptions are for the most part and for most people, not a thing you have to worry about. Another reason to like Linux. So it does have a learning curve and if you get into specifically like what I'm doing, that's years of experience, obviously. But for most people, it would just be pretty much plug and play. So I've talked long enough on why I use Linux and why I keep using Linux. So uh, the music server in the house, that's on my Linux machine. I just had to install one program, which was open source uh, after Logitech uh, depreciated the squeeze box uh, server program after they stopped selling it they made it open source and so people continue to maintain it and I have a Raspberry Pi a Raspberry Pi is a little tiny computer but the size of a deck of cards it runs a variant of Linux and people went ahead and just made a easily ins installation to automatically make it work with that squeeze box system so now I've got a music server in the one room and the Raspberry Pi in the other room plays all my music for me the click repair computer, I put Linux on it. I had it automatically boot up, start the program, start doing the repair, and one button shuts it all down. Basically an embedded appliance. I was able to do that with Linux for free. If I had to buy a Windows license, it would have cost me $100 just to do that. So much more, but I bored you enough. Everybody, thank you so much. If you're interested in open source software, I, I urge you to look into, uh, into its ethos and uh, just about any program that you want is available free, as in no money, 
and free as in your freedom. You know exactly what it does. There's no reporting back to a, uh, a system. Your data is not logged. And that's good too. And that's uh, more and more important as we go along. So that's why I use Linux. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Take care.